<laughs> this is going to be a fun one. Can pro photographers use iPhones in 2024? Uh, I know it's maybe a silly question to ask myself, but sometimes when I'm looking at all of this gear and I'm trying to prep for a shoot, I think to myself, like, how much of this is really worth it? So in this video, I kind of want to give you my thoughts on the iPhone in 2024 matter. And if you need to shoot something on an iPhone, what it is that you can do to really maximize your results. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back. My name is Sergio and I'm a commercial photographer here in Victoria, BC. And I've got a whole lot of gear, got a whole lot of equipment. I've shot with a ton of different cameras, but sometimes you just need an iPhone to get the right shot. And I know we can fake it, we can turn our cameras vertical and get a very similar looking shot, but I think the feel and the organic nature of using your phone is sometimes what your clients are gonna ask of you and what do you do in that case? What do you like, oh, uh, I have 10 grand on me and you want me to shoot with this thousand dollar camera that also does a million other things? Okay, I guess. So one of the first things I think you should do is just not take it personal and uh, not uh, think that uh, all of your stuff was a waste of money or a waste of gear because Apple is the first, second, one of the top two, three companies in the world. Um, they got a whole lot of money. They got a whole lot of R&D money. And a lot of that has gone into the science and the whatever algorithmic nature you want to call it, AI, whatever. But it's gone into these really, really, really smart processors that are taking these ones and zeros from these cameras with these small sensors and creating really incredible images. And that's nothing that, it's not a, like a diss on Canon or Nikon or Fuji or any of the major camera brands, but Apple has deeper pockets. And sure, they maybe aren't technically better cameras than the ones that we're using, but the software behind them is genius. It's absolutely incredible what it can pull out from the sensor that it does have. So they are getting more and more impressive and it's just because you're shooting on an iPhone doesn't mean you can't get something that's really, really good. Maybe back on the iPhone 4 or something, it made a difference and it wasn't that great. But today with like the newest ones and like you have some really capable cameras with really, really, really smart computers inside them that are able to create something that's honestly probably better than you are anyway. So instead of fighting it, and instead of being like, oh no, it needs to be this way because I need to shoot at f1.8 or else it's gonna look like shit. Instead of being like that, just put the necessary effort that you're gonna need to put into creating a scene that looks good on your iPhone. Because shooting with a camera, you can, like there's a lot of magic that can happen with cameras and I'm sure you know this, we can take the most mundane situation, throw a couple flashes on there, shoot it at 1.8, whatever you need to do, whatever your style is, but you can take a very ordinary situation and make it look extraordinary. You just need that little extra. Remember gang, the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra. You're able to do that because you're a photographer and I think your, uh, your tools help you achieve this magic and the iPhone might not necessarily be able to do that for you. But what the iPhone can do is take a really, really good representation of what's in front of it. So the better you make the scene, the better you pre-light everything, the better you are at creating an environment that looks exactly the way you want it to look, the more the camera has no bearing on the final result. Because like I, I would say, you know, the, for the most part, my, like, the way I shoot the, 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 the studio advertising stuff that I like to create, I don't push the limits of the camera very much. I ask a lot of image quality out of it and I want a lot of pixels and detail, but I don't stress the camera the way, let's say, a wedding shooter does. I don't ever shoot past base ISO for the most part. It's very rare. It's just not very difficult, let's say, for the camera. I put more work into creating a scene that looks good and then I throw a flash on it so that it looks consistent and then I'm able to create something that just looks the way that, like, I don't have to do any editing. It's basically just straight out of camera. But that effort that we put into creating that nice scene, honestly, would look just as good on an iPhone as long as you can trigger the camera, trigger the flashes, or if they're, you know, uh, video lights. Oh, and just to add to the creating the scene that looks the way you want it to look like, if you watch last week's video at the end of the Studio Essentials one, I did kind of like a behind the scenes breakdown of how that image was shot. And yeah, sure, I know I shot that on the R8, but 
it's done in a way that I could have probably shot it on any other camera and it would have been fine. So let me know down in the comments actually if you'd like me to do a real camera versus iPhone like head to head side by side comparison and what it can look like and what the difference might be. But uh, yeah, watch that other video and let me know. So don't shy away from this shooting on an iPhone. If your client is like, hey, we're, we're trying to create like a POV style shot, style shot, or we're trying to create something that looks like it's shot on iPhone, just shoot it on an iPhone. Or don't feel weird about it. You know, make sure the lens is clean. Make sure you, you don't have a crack in your, make sure you don't have a crack in your lens like I do. Um, but it, they're, they're plenty fine for what it is that we need to do as photographers. They're really capable cameras and they're even more capable computers in there. I would say. Now your sensor on the phone is a lot smaller. Your, the amount that you can zoom in is a lot less and the amount that you can adjust your uh, raw files or whatever is a lot less. You're, you're much tighter in your constraints, but again, creativity stems from limitations. And if you can use that to be like, all right, well, I can't crop this shot or it has to be done at this focal length because I only have those three lenses or whatever it is, it's gonna help you just narrow down your focus into what's really, really important in the shot. And if that's what you need to maximize, that's the story you need to tell, then the camera shouldn't necessarily be the limiting factor. The, these iPhones are incredible cameras and it's just another tool for the job. And sure, it might not be the shiniest, prettiest hammer, but it's still a hammer and it does the job. And if you have the whole workshop around it that is up to par or, or even better, then the iPhone or the camera that you're using is gonna be no limiting factor. I, I did a lot of this stuff on a crop body. I've done it on a full frame. I've done it on the 1.3 crops from the 1D series. I've shot a whole bunch of different cameras and my work has never, like you can't tell what I shot my, sh my pictures on. You never can, there's no, there's, that wasn't, like the camera was just a byproduct of what it is I had in my hands at the time to shoot it, what it is that I shot. Maybe there's an exception with like the EDC and my, my little film camera, little point shoot thing that I love, but for the most part, if for all my portfolio images, anything that I've shot over the last 10 years, you can't tell if I did it on a 5D Mark III or a 1D Mark II, 1DS Mark II, um, what other cameras have I used? Um, the X-Pro3, the GFX, the, uh, oh man, I've had a 645, I've had the 6x9 Fuji, goodness, I've had so many different cameras, and they're not, none of them necessarily have anything to do with the final product. The final product of the image is the story I was trying to tell for my client, not trying to flex how many megapixels this camera had. So if you can focus on that, I think you'll be a much better photographer and you'll be less petty about having the uh, iPhone debate with your clients. Hope you guys liked it this Monday morning. I'll see you guys in a couple days. Later. <laughs>